How's it going everybody? Matt here with Flaming Dice Reviews. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a neat little card game that I picked up called Murder of Crows uh, by Atlas Games. Uh, very fun little game that I had never heard anything about. I uh, just picked it up on a whim and gave it a try. And right now, let's take a look at what comes inside of the game and then a little bit about how it plays. And then we'll meet back here for my final thoughts. See you in just a bit. Included inside Murder of Crows is a deck of cards uh, and of course the rule booklet and that's just about it. But despite its lack of contents as far as there's no dice, there's no counters, there's no board, there's no nothing. It's just a deck of cards. Uh, despite all that it's quite an in-depth strategic little game. The point of which is to commit a murder. The main cards that are included in Murder of Crows are the letters that spell the word murder and the player that wins is the first one to spell the word out in front of them. Now there's M, U, uh, R, D, and E uh, in the set and each one of these cards whenever you play it into your murder which is sort of your tableau or your player area, uh, has a different effect. The M lets you take a card from another player's player area and put it into your own hand. So if you only have the M and the R down and someone across from you has three or four letters down you and you play an M, you, uh, once you play the M, you get to steal a letter out of another player's uh, player area and put it in your own hand. And again, that player area is called the murder. Uh, the U lets you uh, reveal the other player's hands, every other player's hands, and you get to take one card from any of them. The R lets you draw an additional card from the draw pile. The D lets you choose a letter, and then every other player who has that in their murder has to discard it. Lastly, there is the E. And with the E, Every other player discards their hand and draws three new cards. Now there are ways to counter that, and we're going to get into that in just a second. Now let's say that it was my turn, and I decided to play this D card. Uh, what this D card does, again, is it lets me choose a letter, and every other player has to discard that letter from their murder. So if two other players have a D in their murder, I can play this, and not only do I get one step closer to spelling murder, which is the objective of the game, every player who has the D in their murder has to discard it. Unless they look at these crows in the top left. So let's say that somebody has this card in their hand. The card with the three crows. That matches the number of crows in the card that I played. So if you discard the same number of crows then you can block the effect of a card. Uh, additionally, if you don't have a card that has the same number of crows, you might have a wild card, and those are called wild crows. And they look like this. And you can discard a wild card to block an effect. Uh, wild crows serve a couple of other purposes as well. So if you have M-U-D-E-R and you need that second R or that first R in murder, you can actually use the wild crow in place of that and it takes on all the effects of the letter R and you get to draw a card from it. One of the best parts of Murder of Crows is the story that is produced at the end of the game. So the player who successfully spells murder gets to read out the details of that murder and it's actually spelled out along the bottom of the cards. And as long as the cards are in order, it makes a coherent story. So here's a couple examples. A rotting stench filled the air in a narrow alley when Petunia Nightshade staged an accident and used a pack of poodles to maul Joe Gooseberry. So in that, <laughs> so in that hair example, old Petunia got, got Joe using a pack of poodles. In the second, uh, dawn broke the mist in a grove of weeping willows when Samuel Scratchpad, on a venomous whim, used a frozen turkey to bludgeon Abigail Lestrange. So, 
every time the game ends, there's a little story to be read. Some of them are humorous, um, more humorous than others, but it always adds a little bit of excitement to the end, and that to me was one of the funnest parts, was just hearing the stories, and it does add to the replayability as well. Welcome back everybody. Uh, now that we see how Murder of Crows plays and what comes inside of the box, uh, let's talk about what I think about the game as a whole and give it a final score. Uh, Murder of Crows, uh, like I said, I just picked it up on a whim. Uh, turns out it was super fast to learn, super easy to learn. Um, one thing that I love about it is that it's very portable, very easy to set up. Setup takes maybe 45 seconds, if that. Uh, one thing that can be said about Murder of Crows is that it does feel a little bit like Gloom, if you've ever played Gloom. Uh, so if you enjoyed that game, uh, you would probably enjoy Murder of Crows. The gameplay is very different, but the art is reminiscent, uh, the theme, and the humor is also uh, reminds me a lot of Gloom. Uh, the art is beautiful. Uh, I love the dark uh, theme that, that revolves around the crows. Uh, my favorite poem is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, so that's just more bonus points uh, in my opinion. Again, the game is very funny. Uh, the stories that it produces are just outlandish and very humorous. A uh, lot more strategy than I would have thought out of a little card game. Uh, I guess that can be said for a lot of card games, uh, including poker, which is nothing but cards. You know, Murder of Crows is nothing but cards, but there is a lot of strategy. To be honest, there's a lot of replayability here. I really enjoyed it. I can't really think of anything bad to say about it. Uh, I ran Murder of Crows through the Flaming Dice Review scoring system, which scores a game based on eight categories, including replayability, uh, fun, and artwork. And Murder of Crows scored an 87 out of 100. A great game for, or a great score for such a small little package game. And it might be just a filler, but we've had more fun playing Murder of Crows than we've had playing some full-size games. Um, that's just a fact. Well, if you like this video, uh, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and visit the website at www.flamingdicereviews.com. Uh, there's a lot more videos there, and as well as articles about board games, uh, Kickstarter projects, and my recent gaming escapades. Uh, so please give the website a visit, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.